You know, one of my favorite lines from a movie is, Daddy, are we poor? If you know what movie that came from, you message me down below and I'm going to send you a free quart of our homemade maple syrup. So I was out here this morning hanging my first load of clothes on the clothesline to dry. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's like 57 degrees. It's going to be very warm over the next few days and I just prefer to use the clothesline over the dryer. So if things are a little rough or scratchy like bath towels, you can throw them in the dryer on air fluff or just on low heat and that'll puff them back up. Of course you can use vinegar as a fabric softener or you can use regular store-bought fabric softener if you prefer. But jeans can get a little bit crispy on the clothesline so they're really good to tumble in the dryer a little bit to soften them up. So I got to thinking about poor, the word poor and what it means to different people and there are so many different variances of what is poor. We have all this land. Our farm here is 120 acres. Before my husband married me, he started buying some residential properties as investments instead of investing in 401ks because real estate was a good way to go for money investments. To look around at our Dodge, running our old two-cylinder tractors, or driving my 99 Chevy Suburban, people think we're poor. Growing up, my family was labeled as poor. Well, who labels you as poor? It really got me thinking about public school system, society, economics. People would think we were poor for running that old tractor. Those old tractors can go for $10,000 now. There's nothing poor about spending $10,000 on a tractor. And our tractors aren't hobby tractors. They are farm implements that make money for the farm. A lot of times people perceive if you have a home garden that you're poor, that you don't have money to buy food at the grocery store. Well, as we all know, during this last few weeks, everyone is trying to get in gardens, victory gardens, prepping, canning, doing everything they can to make sure that they can provide for themselves. So does canning, does foraging for food, do those things make you poor? Or do those things keep you tied to your roots, like being Native American? Or growing up walking along the railroad, picking wild mulberries with your parents? Some things are done on tradition. Some things are done on a necessity. And some things are just for pure enjoyment. Last week I was out in the woods. I discovered wild ramps growing in our woods. And it was the most fun going out there and digging up these ramps and making a meal with them. It's not that I'm short on onions. I've got a bag and a half of onions in my pantry right now. We're not poor for going out in the woods and digging up onions. People go out and go hunting mushrooms. I saw an ad on Facebook Marketplace this week for $45 a pound for wild foraged morel mushrooms. You sure don't want to eat the wrong mushroom, that's for sure. But if you're paying $45 for mushrooms from the guy who foraged them, he's making money well, you might be looking at him as being poor. As you know, we raise our own meat animals at the farm. These are our Tamworth pigs. This is one of the first things that people see when they pull into my driveway. I remember going by kids' houses on the school bus when I was in grade school and thinking those people are really poor. They have a farm and it's all muddy with cows. They don't have a paved driveway. There's old rickety barns. They must be poor. And I don't know what ever made me think that because we grew up out in the country in an old farmhouse. I remember when I was very young, my mom had just finished beauty school and her and my dad were installing a beauty shop in her house. Because the house was an old farmhouse, the old parlor room was turned into a beauty salon. Because I was the youngest kid, I was still at home from school, and my mom could see customers during the day while I was watching television programs and playing outside. She could see two or three customers a day and make more money than had she left me with daycare 
and gone to work. But of course, when I started going to school, I was labeled as poor. So it was really interesting growing up in a society where people say you're poor because you're out in the country. There was another girl that lived not very far from us. She wasn't really a country road person. They lived on the paved main state highway going into town. Her mom had a hair salon at home and her dad worked for General Motors also, same as mine. But guess who was labeled as poor and who wasn't? That's right, our family was labeled as poor. A lot of it is that my parents weren't huge into consumerism. They bought things used, they repurposed things. My mom had farm animals because she was raised as a country farm girl. And even though my parents didn't have a huge farm with a lot of acres, my mom always had rabbits, she had dogs. At one point she was breeding and raising show cats. We had geese and rabbits. And these were the things that brought my mom joy. These were hobbies that she had while her children were very young so that she would be entertained and doing something that she enjoyed that she did as a younger person. Here's another for instance for you. A neighbor gave my husband this plow. Basically, he didn't know how to use it. Last year, we had an old sugar shack in the woods and we were pulling out scrap metal from it. And these are some plow blades. Some are John Deere, some aren't, and some are actually broken. Well, he's wanting to prep the field and start plowing. Had I thrown away all those parts, it's a Sunday, no John Deere dealership is open. We're close friends with one local farmer and, and all he had was one bottom blade that goes here and it had a lot of wear on the side. And if he were to put it on, it would have started wearing this down. This is how it's supposed to look. Now, if I would have thrown that pile away over there, he wouldn't have been able to do what he's about to do. He's gonna take a section of that with the worn one that the neighbor gave us weld them together and then be able to use them as one to make up for the wear difference on the one that he got from the neighbor. So it's the same situation. This farmer lives in this tiny little house that he grew up in. He's in his 70s. He's never left home and they've saved everything from any project they've ever had. They never throw anything away. They have makeshift sheds and buildings with leftover parts, scrap lumber, pipes and tubing and drain tile. But those are things that at some point somebody actually had to pay for and they're not waste good. Today, he was the wealthiest man around. He had the parts that we needed to fix our plow so that we could get to work in our field. So one thing an old neighbor had mentioned to me probably 13 years ago was the one thing she hated about living in the city is that you can't burn your own garbage you have to pay for curbside pickup and curbside recycling. For most of my childhood, I grew up in the city limits. We were allowed to burn our leaves. We were allowed to burn garbage. People had open bonfires right in the city. These days you can't do any of that. And since people started having backyard burning pits, that were parts of their patio set, they started getting a little more lenient about it. But I had never thought that burning your trash was a luxury or a freedom. But these not so pretty burning barrels sure do come in handy and we have been selling a lot of them. And I can't tell you how many turned up noses show up in the driveway looking for a burning barrel because they're worried during the shutdown times that they're not gonna have trash pickup. It all makes you stop and think for a moment about the socioeconomic label that we put on other people and that we put on ourselves. Does a person with a piled up curb full of garbage look poor because they've got a lot of garbage going out? Maybe because they're not sorting and separating and doing the recycling like the neighbor is? Or maybe they don't have the latest siding, the latest shingles on the roof, or the fanciest new car parked in their driveway.
we don't hire our lawn service done. I just pulled two truckloads from the back of the Dodge from my own backyard that I cut myself with my new chainsaw. And I'm proud of myself for having learned the chainsaw and done the work myself. So in high school, everyone was required to take different electives. I chose to take shop class. I took woodworking shop classes so that I could do something that was enjoyable and of interest to me and a skill that I was able to pick up and use later on in life. Now this rocking chair, I was able to pick it up, used on Facebook. This is an old antique rocker that would probably cost $100 in an antique shop. I was able to pick it up for $20. It had some structural damage to it, so I'm only going to use it as a display. But because of my woodworking background, I'm able to decide whether I want to strip this down and restore it back to original and do the wood repairs on it or put a coat of paint on it and use it as it is. When I was growing up, we had a lot of secondhand furniture like this and our house was full of furniture. There's a lot of haves and have nots in every stage of life, but we never went without anything that was essential. We might not have ever had brand new furniture from Art Van or any other chain furniture store, but we had plenty. We had furniture like this painted sideboard that I'm working on. Because most of what we had was either free from a thrift store or a yard sale, almost everything we own had several coats of paint on it. It makes it really hard for me to paint old furniture now because I spent many years doing restoration projects because of what I learned in high school of how to sand off the paint, restore furniture to beautiful wood, and look at the natural beauty with a coat of stain or varnish on it. it's very rare that this mom gets a quiet moment and I just start doing a job like this hanging clothes on the clothesline and I start thinking about what is poor what is wealth what is poverty There's so many different concepts or perceptions of what is wealth or what is poverty and what is poor. If you look at your surrounding relationships, you might feel richer than the next guy. So these days, when I have a project like this, it gives me a little quiet time, it gives me time to think about things, and it helps the person to realize what they have. At the very least, it gives you a little time to appreciate the beauty of everything going on around you. I get to be out here on our farm and enjoy all the beauty of nature of the circle of life and of God's creation. I surely find myself a much wealthier woman than I ever thought I would be because in money and in things we might not have so much but we have so many other things going on that make us not so poor. Continue the conversation with your comments down below because I want to know what your perception is and it's always nice to share your outlook and your stories on life too. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.